Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Agriculture is responsible for about 8 to 10 percent of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. The National Farmers Union is tackling this by presenting a vision of a near zero emissions farm and food system for Canada. My name is Darren Quallman. I'm the Director of Climate Crisis Policy and Action with the National Farmers Union based uh, just south of Saskatoon. National Farmers Union is a national organization of farmers and non-farmer associate members from coast to coast. As Darren Quallman, author of a new report, explains, emissions from farms come from three big buckets. Uh, the first is energy related, so uh, carbon dioxide coming out of exhaust pipes and tailpipes. And that's not as much as people would expect, maybe uh, 10 to 20 percent of agricultural emissions. The second is uh, from livestock, either the methane that comes out of the mouths of cattle and other grazing livestock or, or from manure. And that's roughly uh, 30 to 40 percent of greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. And the other one, and this is a really key one, is uh, nitrous oxide, from mostly from nitrogen fertilizer use. And the reason it's so important is, one, it's big, again, 30 to 40 percent of emissions, but also that's what's driving the top line upward. Greenhouse gas emissions are going up from agriculture, and it's because of the increasing use of fertilizers. It's only in that last hundred years that farming has really become a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. So there's a real direct correlation between the inputs going into one end of agriculture and the greenhouse gas emissions coming out the other end. So if you want a low emission system, you need to reduce inputs. Bigger equipment and dramatically increased use of fertilizers have increased emissions, and it's also dramatically reduced farm incomes. Yeah, there's a whole range of pathologies in agriculture right now. Um, debt just hit a record high of uh, $115 billion, and it's gone up in just whatever year in the last 25. Uh, $115 billion is higher than the debts of a lot of nations on Earth. Uh, we're losing farmers at a very rapid rate. We've lost two-thirds of our young farmers just since 1991. And if we don't find ways to get those young farmers back on the, the farms, Canadian agriculture risks going off a demographic cliff. And net income is just a chronic problem. Um, year after year, Canadian taxpayers have to transfer two, three, four billion dollars a year into agriculture to keep things going. Qualman says the model needs to be transformed from one that increases the use of inputs, increases emissions, and reduces margins to farmers to a more sustainable model. We think that there are ways in, that we can pursue this so that we'll maintain adequate yields, but at the same time, reduce the dependence on fertilizer. And there's actually an opportunity here to increase margins. This imagined future is not about abandoning big farms, but rather about adding more emphasis on local food sheds around cities building on the public's passion for farmers markets and fresh local food. We call the concept food sheds, kind of riffing on the idea of watersheds. You know, a watershed is the area that contributes water to a river and a food shed is the area that con contributes food to a city. And we point out that cities have been around for about 5,000 years. And for 99% of that time, they were supplied by the local food shed, by the area around the city. Qualman says local food doesn't solve everything, but that it should be part of a transformed food system that mimics biology, is biodiverse, is energized more by sunlight than fossil fuels, and one that reconnects people with local food sheds. Find links to a vision of a near-zero emission farm and food system for Canada and learn more at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.